yeah. look, um, kind of an overview of uh, really characters in our book, uh, which we really won't have too much time on, but nonetheless, it's good background. Uh, so this is uh, uh, chapters one through four. Uh, think about uh, pre-colonial period. Uh, we generally think about the people that were there uh, prior to European colonization. Uh, we know these people to be the Native Americans. Think about, well, how did the, the Native America, if you take a look at the map, uh, what you're going to see is you're going to, at one point in time, there was a land bridge up here. So what they basically did was they traveled across from Asia over into Alaska down throughout North America. And we're talking thousands of years ago. So that would give you an idea of what we're uh, talking about with the first peoples in the Americas. Uh, one thing that we need to understand about Native Americans is their interaction with the environment. The question is, what ways have Native Americans been able to adapt to their environment? When you take a look at some of these pictures, what you're going to see is you're going to see Native Americans in different regions throughout, in this case, the United States. You take a look at some of the pueblos uh, down in um, Colorado, New Mexico area, they use the adobe that was available to them. You see a wigwam here, they use what's available, kind of grass huts. And then over here what we see is we see uh, the teepees that were made from buffalo hides. Uh, Native American views uh, of the land and spirituality kind of go hand in hand. They viewed the land as their god, as their religion. So they were very respectful of it. They used the things that were available to them. Uh, it gives you an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, the different regions and cultures of Native Americans, when we talk about Native Americans, we don't really want to lump them all into this one group. Uh, there were distinct differences uh, depending on where certain Native Americans lived throughout the United States, and you see that over time with the totem poles, which meant that there was availability of trees. The Plains Indians um, really depended on the buffalo for every aspect of life. We see these areas uh, down in the American Southwest where they use turquoise and things like that. And then we see um, Native Americans in the north and you see some uh, uh, snowshoes back here which you know really forced them to adapt to the climate that they were in. So we have all these different regions in different cultures really amongst Native Americans. Now we make the shift to uh, European exploration and settlement. We see the Spanish Empire, uh, we see people like Christopher Columbus, we see uh, these different colonial empires taking slavery to the Americas in what we would call conquest. That means uh, they took over using force. Okay, They put a lot of the native people into slavery uh, in order to work on things like their sugarcane fields and those types of things. So when the, Sp or when the Spanish and other European countries arrived, there was a dramatic shift on how the Americas operated. Now we take a look at some of the differences here in terms of the different countries that came to colonize uh, North, uh, North America in particular. We see the French, the English, and the Dutch. Uh, their main uh, motivation was the fur trade. Uh, one of the first colonies is known as Jamestown. Another one is known as New Netherland, which reflects really the Dutch settlements, and that was up in places near New York. Uh, what we know. You take a look at some of the earliest settlements here. They basically look like enclosed forts. Uh, and then we have a map here of some of the earlier settlements uh, in places like New York City along the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but they had different motivations, but nonetheless, they came to North America to um, really with ambitious means to, to see if they could make something of themselves, make money, and those kinds of things. The most relevant to us are going to be the English colonies in America. The British colonies were the ones that ultimately uh, became separated after the American Revolution and the United States began, um, uh, really just began its own country. We see the New England colonies are the colonies up here in the uh, northeast region of the United States. We see the middle colonies are some of these colonies right here that include Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, those types of colonies. Then we see the southern colonies which are places like um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Now remember, Florida was not a county. This was controlled by the Spanish. So if you take a look at this, uh, make sure you understand that the, the distinction. The, colon the British colonies uh, went from southern Georgia up to places like Maine. So take a look at those uh, on the map. Now let's talk about life in the colonies. There's basically two types of uh, communities here. There was farm life, which we see over here on the left. Uh, and then city life, which we see over here on the right, which really um, attach them to the water and things like that. Major um, ports, which include then a lot of trade and things like that. So I want you to think about this. How were people making money? 
what kind of jobs would you see in these different regions um, throughout the colonies during this time period? I really want you to think about that. Look at what you see here. Think about some of the jobs that people might have. Now, one thing we got to remember here is that the colonists were under the rule of the British uh, prior to the American Revolution. So I want to talk quickly about the rights of colonists and crime and punishment and how that worked. What kind of consequences were set in place? What kind of rules were set in place? Uh, and this is what we're talking about. We've got the Magna Carta, which translates as the Great Charter. Uh, this granted the people of England the right to participate in their government. So that just simply means like, yeah, you can vote and choose the people that you want to be in charge. So it's similar to, uh, it's, it's a pathway to uh, democracy as we know it today. Then we've got the English Bill of Rights, um, a list of rights that belong to the people uh, in a representative government, again a reflection of the beginning of democratic ideals. Uh, and then of course we've got the laws and consequences of the colonies. There were laws and consequences um, and for the most part the colonists generally uh, were free to make decisions about the government on their own. Um, we, we can't start this uh, particular unit without talking about life for African Americans, talking about the African slave trade. If you take a look at the picture on the right, this is a blueprint of a slave holding boat. What you see here is this is where they would line the slaves up as they traveled from Africa into the Americas. Okay, And this is what we call the triangle, triangular trade. They would take slaves, bring them to the Americas, trade those slaves for rum and things like that, which they would then bring to uh, Europe and sell that rum. And then, once again, we see them going back to Africa. So this was an economic uh, trade route that they had between slaves and rum and uh, really and, and sugar cane and things like that. So there was an economic motivation for um, creating slaves and uh, you know, bringing a people uh, into bondage um, in the Americas. I want to quickly talk about education and religion. A lot of people fled uh, Europe for religious freedom. One of the groups that we know are the Puritans, um, and 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 they were seeking uh, really religious freedom when they came from Europe to the United States. Uh, then we see the select chance. Um, the select few had a chance to go to school. Not many people went to school, um, but a select few were able to be educated, generally those that were a bit more wealthy. Take a look at uh, colonial families, leisure, and food. Uh, generally, the men were in charge of the households. That probably shouldn't be any surprise to anyone. The men uh, would play billiards and things like that with other men. The women were generally... Uh, expected to take care of the house, take care of the children, and those types of things. So see what you can figure out from some of the pictures here that we have. And down here we see uh, the type of food that they were making over stoves and fires. And once again, women generally were the ones that were in charge of uh, the cooking and those types of things. So the, the gender roles were definitely uh, in place in the pre-colonial period. So the only thing I have on here is a now what? And that will bring us to our current... Um, chapter 5 information that we need to know that begins the American Revolution and this is going to be the time period uh, that you will be assessed on and that you understand uh, that you understand very clearly so keep that in mind now what and that's where we'll take off in terms of our study of early American history